I've said all along that we would follow the guidance of the CDC, state and local officials, and public health officials with respect to our campaign events. We'll continue to do that. This is a matter, this whole coronavirus issue is a matter of presidential leadership. And later this week, I'll be speaking to you on what I believe the nation should be doing to address this virus. But tonight, I want to speak to uh, you from Philadelphia where we announced our campaign at the front end, where we did our final announcement. To all those who have been knocked down, to all those who have been counted out, left behind, this is your campaign. Just over a week ago, many of the pundits declared that uh, this candidacy was dead. Now we're very much alive. <laughs> And although, although there's a way to go, it looks like we're going to have another good night. Yeah. With victories in Mississippi, Missouri, Michigan. And uh, we're uh, waiting to hear from North Dakota, Idaho, and Washington State. As I said from the beginning, this election is the one that has character on the ballot. The character of the candidates, the character of the nation is on the ballot. It's more than a comeback, in my view, our campaign. It's a comeback for the soul of this nation. This campaign is taking off, and I believe we're going to do well from this point on. Take nothing for granted. We want to earn every single vote in every single state. But if you're willing, if you want to join us, go to JoeBiden.com. <laughs> Sign up. Sign up. Volunteer and contribute if you can. We need you. We want you. And there's a place in our campaign for each of you. And I want to thank Bernie Sanders and his supporters for their tireless energy and their passion. We share a common goal. And together, we'll defeat Donald Trump. We'll defeat him together. We're going to bring this nation together. We're regenerating a Democratic base, the Democratic Party, the African-American community, high school educated folks like the ones I grew up with in Claymont, not far from here, in my old neighborhood, labor, suburban women, veterans, firefighters, union members, and so many more. People of every economic station, the poor who are struggling, and they are struggling in this environment, the middle class, worries about whether or not they're going to be able to hang on and stay there, maintain their economic security. They're the reason Jill and I got involved this, in this campaign in the first place. And they're the reason why I became a Democrat so long ago. And I can't tell you, I really mean this from the bottom of my heart, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the confidence they've shown in me thus far and the way they turned out to vote for me. In my first campaign, when I was a kid, a long time ago, I had a billboard that said one thing on it. I had a picture of my wife and children, and it said, for all our families. That's all it was, for all our families. That included Democratic families, families of independent voters, Republican families, everyone of every stripe, for all our families. And look, that's what we were able to accomplish in South Carolina. That's what we did on Super Tuesday. And it appears, although it's a little premature, it appears that's what we're able to do tonight. <laughs> in just the past week, so many of my incredibly capable competitors have endorsed me. 
Mayor Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, Beto O'Rourke, Mike Bloomberg, Cory Booker, and Kamala Harris. Together, together we're bringing this party together. That's what we have to do. Tonight, we are a step closer to restoring decency, dignity, and honor to the White House. That's our ultimate goal. Yes. And at this moment, when there's so much fear in the country, and there's so much fear across the world, we need American leadership. We need presidential leadership that's honest, trusted, truthful, and steady. Reassuring leadership. If I'm given the honor of becoming your president, I promise you, I'll strive to give the nation that very leadership. Every day, every day, I have a privilege the whole office. That's the reason why I'm running for president. I believe we're in an incredible moment in American history, a phenomenal opportunity to deliver a bold, progressive vision to the American people, guaranteeing that every American has health care, affordable health care, total health care, not a privilege, but a right. <laughs> Building on Obamacare, providing every child access to good education, regardless of their zip code, to deal with the moral depravity of our children who have to learn as they go to school, little children, to duck and cover, zigzag down a hallway because they fear someone with a semi-automatic weapon may be coming in. We have to stand up to the gun manufacturers and to the NRA, and I will do it. We have to rebuild the middle class. We have to rebuild the middle class. And this time, bring everybody along. Everybody along. And my fellow Americans, we have to once again lead the world. Donald Trump's America First policies made America alone. You know, in the fight against climate change, we have to rally the rest of the world to act and act now rejoin the Paris Climate Accord on day one, make it clear to our allies that we'll honor our commitments, that our word can be trusted. And make clear to our adversaries that we will stand fast and restoring world order. That's the American responsibility. Tonight, I'm speaking to you from the National Constitution Center not far from where two of the most important documents in all of history were written, the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Those words became the American creed known around the world. The U.S. Constitution, we the people, these words literally changed the world. We've never fully lived up to the promise of either of those documents. But well, we've never, ever before walked away from them. And they're a reminder of what's at stake in this election. Our very democracy is at stake in this election. As I said from the moment I announced not far from here that I believe we're in the battle for the soul of this nation. With Donald Trump as president, our core values, our standing in the world, our very democracy, Everything that has made America, America is truly at stake. I believe this nation can overcome four years of Donald Trump, but given eight, four more years, he'll forever and fundamentally change the very character of this nation. We can't let that happen. But winning means, but winning means uniting America, not sowing more division and anger. It means having a president who not only knows how to fight, but knows how to heal. It means replacing a president who demeans and demonizes people with a president who believes in empathy, compassion, and respect for everyone. It is my hope that the days of divisiveness will soon be over. We're a decent, brave, resilient people. We are better than this moment we're in. We 
suggest what we have to do. We just need, we just need to remember who we are. This is the United States of America. There's not a single thing we cannot do if we do it together. We're on close to the eve of St. Patrick's Day. I'm thought of a, uh, a quote. Some of you heard me quote many times. A fellow that I admired very much who passed away not long ago, a poet named Seamus Haney. He wrote a poem called The Cure of Troy. And here's what he said in one stanza. He said, history teaches us not to hope on this side of the grave, but then, once in a lifetime, that long for tidal wave of justice rises up and hope and history rhymes. I truly believe it's within our power for the first time in a long time because of what's happened in the past three years, the power to make hope and history rhyme. That's what we're going to do. God bless you all. And may God protect you.